Sex addiction and criminal behavior. That's a hot topic, a really hot topic, and it keeps cycling because people do things that are criminal and then they say, well, I have an addiction. I wanna talk about that. I wanna help you understand that. I want you to understand the news headings when someone says, I'm a sex addict, but they did this kind of crime. We need to talk about that, have a good conversation. So I want you to stay tuned. Now, if you have not subscribed, please do. We have hundreds of things that can help you. Also, if you have a question for me, just put it in the box. We'll try to get to it as soon as possible. Sex addiction and criminal behavior. You know, occasionally you read a headline about someone doing something really criminal and then saying, I have an addiction. As if somehow they're connected. And it's not uncommon for the news media to put something up that, that sounds tintillating. Uh, I remember reading a story where the cops said he said, okay? And so it is real possible to see a headline like that, but I wanna demystify this. I wanna make it perfectly clear what is really happening. Now, before I do that, this might be the first time you've met me. So I need to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Doug Weiss, and I am the president of the American Association for Sex Addiction Therapists. We train counselors all over the world. I'm the executive director of Heart Heart Counseling Center. We do three and five day intensives. I've been counseling sex addicts for over 30 years. I have my own personal story of recovery that's over three decades and it's been tested by a polygraph. I've not masturbated, done porn, or had any sexual behavior outside of marriage for over three decades. Most sex addiction experts cannot say that. So I am really dedicated to helping people with addictions heal and get well. I am also in a unique situation where for many years we've been doing three and five day intensives and I do psychological testing on the clients who, who come in from all over the country, all over the world, every age group, every uh, ethnicity, every religious background, any, um, any way you can imagine people come, they come uh, to my office and they get great help. But one of the benefits of what I do is that I actually get to do a psychological test. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. Now, addictions, alcohol, drugs, sex, food, they are so prolific in our community, in our societies, globally. So there are people with alcohol addiction, drug addiction, sex addiction, porn addiction, and these people, for the most part, have no criminal behavior whatsoever. If they did, the world would be full of only jails. They live normal lives. They go to work, they have a little secret life, and they tend to manage functionally with their addictions, trying to raise their families. Now, sometimes it blows up because their life gets out of control. But the things that get them out of control are not usually criminal behavior. It might be affairs, getting caught with porn, having a doctor say, you're gonna die if you don't lose weight, okay? Or, you know, getting in some kind of legal trouble in a minor way, moving them to healing in their addictions. Now, addictions are diseases of choice. You choose to eat, you choose to have sex, you choose to gamble, okay? But what happens is, especially with the sexual addiction, is you actually hijack your sexuality to an object world, desensitizing to you value of, of the people that are gender that you are using for sexual stimulation. So they can decrease in value. Now, someone with an addiction, it can actually start motivating them to do more and more and greater and greater and different and different things. And that's true whether it's alcohol, drugs, or gambling. A guy might start off with a lottery ticket, then go to the horse races, and then he's you know, betting $10,000, $50,000 on a football game. The same is true with sex addiction. Most people stay at one level. Some people jump up to um, illegal behaviors like prostitutes are providing services that people want to provide that are really questionable. And that's also allows them to objectify other people. People have no values. Addicts move into an object relationship. Now, I've been working with sex addicts for over 30 years, about 5,000 or more sex addicts. And we've tested hundreds and hundreds of sex addicts. I would say 
just anecdotally, 1% or less have ever done any type of criminal behavior, okay? And so now, that is addiction. Criminal behavior, when you get into the, like, uh, the material about the criminal mind, the criminal mind is its own place. It's where you can not only decrease value, but you can use people, you can harm people, you can take advantage of people for your own good. These people often suffer from several levels of mental illnesses. Now, if you go into the criminal population, you will find people with addictions, okay? But in the addiction community, there are a small percentage of people that might commit crimes, but by and large, they are not criminals. And so sometimes what can happen is someone commits a crime. It can be anything. It can be rape. It can be murder. It can be um, stealing. It could be a drug heist. It could be all kinds of illegal behaviors. Okay, drunken driving, that you can kill someone in a drunken driving stupor. All kinds of things can happen. Now, when someone is committing a crime, they have to go through several layers of thinking about that generally. There are impulse crimes, but if someone's committing a robbery or a murder, they actually have to think through, get the materials, get the gun, find the victim profile they're looking for, and then plan it and then act on the plan. That is criminal behavior, that is criminal thinking. That is not addiction. And these are separate. And so when we see a headline about someone saying, I'm a sex addict or uh, you know, I'm a drug addict and therefore I robbed the bank. Okay, those are two separate things. You are a drug addict, maybe heroin, and you thought robbing a bank would be the quickest way to get money. Now you didn't think through that well, you got caught and you're in jail. But there's a difference between your addiction and actually plotting a bank robbery, actually plotting a rape or a murder. These take a criminal mind. These take time and effort that in the largest cases of addiction, they would never ever comprehend doing that to another person. They would never comprehend doing that for even their drug. So I wanna be clear as we read headlines about this stuff, that someone who commits a crime may have multiple addictions, alcohol, drugs, sex, food, work, anything, okay? But people with addictions generally are not necessarily committing crimes. Now think about how many people who struggle with just sex addiction, porn addiction, alcohol addiction, drug addiction. If all of those, or even half of those, were committing violent crimes, our entire society globally would be in utter chaos all the time. Now, fortunately, the criminal mind, that kind of mindset, the kind of population, the, the kind of population that has usually mental disorders, measurable mental disorders, is much smaller. Now, when they combine and they make that as somehow connecting that, that is sad because it doesn't represent the addiction community whatsoever. A lot of these people are just hurting. They've been sexually abused. They've been abandoned. They're medicating their life and they're trying to figure out how to get through life. They're not trying to hurt people. They're not trying to injure, rape, or murder, or rob banks. They're not trying to do that. They might be trying to get their hit, trying to get their high, trying to escape their pain, okay? And people get hurt in that process, but not in a criminal way. So I want you to consider as you're reading the headlines, and they come up several times, that's why I'm doing this uh, particular YouTube, because I want you to know, if you are an addict, there is lots of help for you. There is hope for you. You never have to worry about going off the grid and committing crazy crimes. What you can do is take the first steps of getting help. So per your addiction, find a support group, find a therapist, find someone who can actually help you. There's lots of materials. If it happens to be a sex addiction, go to our website, Sex Addict, S E X A D D I C T dot com. There's a free test there. There's apps there you can go, newsletters you can get. We want you to take the next step, regardless of what your addiction is, because we don't want you to have any consequences in your life from your addiction, especially criminal consequences. Now, if you're a criminal, you're going to put yourself on a path to eventually get caught. You're going to hurt people. And I would say, if you know you're on that path, get psychological help, get a psychological test, get sincerely moving in a direction that you don't hurt others and hurt yourselves. 
You know, we, we live in a community and we're all connected. When one person commits a crime like this in a city, it goes all over uh, now because of the internet, newspapers and all that goes all over the globe. But it doesn't represent people with addictions. And so I want to encourage you, no matter who you are, no matter where you are in life, and maybe you have no addictions, you're just like, I just want to find out how, does the, how do these two things work? Well, I hope I helped you a little bit. I hope that I've encouraged those who have addictions to move down the road, to enjoy your life. I've been sober for over three decades. It's wonderful to be sober. You can have a great life no matter where you started. And I was abandoned, abused, sexually abused, alcohol, drug addict, sex addict. I understand the road, but I also have been recovering for a long time and have helped thousands and thousands of people get and have great lives. You deserve that if that's your issue. So again, if you have not subscribed to our channel, you really want to do that. There's lots of helpful um, videos for you to get information and get starting points to take the next step. If there's a question that's still in your heart, please put it down there and we'd love to hear from you, love to respond to you. And again, take the next step. Thank you.